Now you're putting me in a liability situation by giving you advice on a contract I'm not representing you on. You want to go with a cheaper agent? Go with a cheaper agent. Right? These are all decisions we get to make. The opportunity to expand your market share is unlimited. Nobody's in your way. Nobody can stop you. There's nothing between you and, and, and building more market share at any time. Let me echo. Let me repeat. It does not matter. Nothing's going to change. You're never going to get paid less than the value you provide. The tough part is navigating the deal, negotiating the deal, making sure there's everything is right. Yeah, they, they love the way it is now and they buy it and you make a lot of money. Sellers want to sell for the highest amount of money, so they want to attract the most amount of buyers. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caru! Soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. Hello and welcome to the Level Up Your Real Estate Biz podcast. My name is Lucas Rowell and I am your host. We are super excited to have with us here today for episode 19, NAR Verdict and Settlement, Now What? Which is part of our micro series where we fire round through questions with our guests and co-hosts on specific topics to really cut through the noise and BS and bring you the people that are getting it done every single day so you can level up in your life and in your real estate biz. So we have a incredibly special guest and co-host here with us today. This man has been on stages all around the world. He is a mentor, 2000s, and his social media game is one that is hard to match. Please help me welcome to the show, Mr. Ricky Karuk. What's up, bro? How are you? We're doing great, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm just uh, in the lab here, just getting it done. Bro, you, and you're all over the place, too. I've been seeing you all over stages, man. Just got back from Portland, did one there in Vancouver, Washington, and then uh, went straight from there from Atlanta did one there. So yeah, I got Manhattan next and then a little tour through Florida. So um, yeah, man, just staying busy. Nice, man. I, I love to see it. And there's there's a lot that's uh, been going on since the last time that you've been on the show. So I appreciate you coming back and really looking forward to uh, diving in and, and really trying this on a fire round type of uh, scenario where we run through this in 25 minutes, very short, succinct and to the point. Yeah, man. All right, so let's dive right in. So with that said, I, I mean, I guess there's there's something going on in the real estate industry, right, that has everybody in a frenzy, some kind of settlement. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about this, what's going on, and, and why this has got everybody all worked up? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the reason why everybody, and I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about agents, you know, worked up. I mean, the general public, you know, celebrates this as a win. For the most part, you know, thinking commissions are going to go down. They're going to have a rude awakening of that. And um, the agents, um, the only reason you would be worried right now is if you feel like you or you get paid more than you're worth, you know, which is not the case at all. Um, you know, agents actually are underpaid based on, you know, the value that they actually bring to buyers and sellers. And that's why commissions haven't went down. That's why commissions haven't went down yet. That's why I still get the same commission that I got when I started back in 2002. Still getting the same commissions as I got back then. I still get the same five or six percent. I got five or six percent back then. I get five or six percent now. It's it's not different. You know, the, the ones that are worried about this, they're kind of subconsciously sending a message uh, to the world that, hey, you know, I get paid more than I'm worth. And I'm worried that now I'm going to get that this is going to be spotlighted. And I'm, now my my pay is going to be reduced. And, right. um, you know, and, and so in essence, you're basically calling yourself a fraud, you know, a scam. That, right. that, that, that's the message that they're unintentionally sending to the world, uh, you know, about this. But the fact of the matter is, is that we provide way more value than we actually get paid for. And that will just continue. Um, that's why commissions right. haven't went down. and They're not going to go down, um, you know, and if if buyers think they can go do it on their own, that's fine. You know, let them go do one deal. They'll come running right back to you and pay you anything you want at that point once they realize that you do more than just open doors and look up houses. Um, same thing with sellers. And by the way, we're at an all-time high when it comes to the amount of information people know about yeah. real estate, right? But we're also at an all-time high in the amount of people, buyers and sellers, who choose to use a real estate agent. I find that very interesting because people are like, well, everything's on Zillow. Well, yeah, so why are more people than ever using real estate agents? If, they, if everybody already knows everything, and so it kind of brings up the 
the question of are are we more than just somebody that knows something, right? Are we more than just information and knowledge holders? Um, and the answer is yes. And so like it would take me, you know, it would be a video that would last literally days and days and days, you know, all the way through to talk about all the things that agents do behind the scenes that brings value to the buyers and sellers, um, you know, that that they don't have time to do, they're not going to do, and they don't know how to do. And, For sure. and, and look, the cream always rises to the top. So, you know, the truth always comes out is what the meaning of that saying is. And um, you might as well start with the truth and to stay with the truth because you're going to end with the truth and it's the truth, right? So, you know, if you realize that there's nothing to be worried about, you know, and, and again, let me reiterate, if AI came out and took out agents, okay, like if you learn how to build a real estate business, you can go build any business you want. Yep. You know, why are you pigeonholing yourself into that? This is it for you. It's real estate or nothing. The skills I learn in real estate can only be used for real estate. No, you can go do right. anything you want to do. You learn how to get leads. You learn how to convert leads. You learn how to retain leads. You learn how to ascend, ascend leads. I mean, you that's business one on one. You can go, you can go build any kind of business you want, you know. So realize a lot of people are like, why would I do real estate if real estate isn't, agents aren't even going to exist in five years? Well, number one, they're going to exist. Same way lawyers that's still right. exist, even though there's legal zoom. And even if it didn't work out, your backup plan is, is oh, I learned how to build a business. Now I can go build any business I want. Right? Precisely. So, yeah. It, there, there's just, it's it's a bunch of uh, noise, bro. You know, it's just, it's thousand just a percent. bunch of noise. Um, the lawyers found a loophole and, um, you know, went and got that money and good, great. You know, it's not going to crumble. It's not going to crumble the real estate industry, you know, by any means. So just stop listening to it, right? All this stuff, all the uh, headlines and all the, all the settlements and all the things that are put on front street and on in these headlines and everything that all that should literally be private information, you know, that isn't even released yep. to the public. It should be behind closed doors. Mm. In my mind, like the damage that it's doing to, you know, the general public for the perception of agents, it's going to harm the general public because they're sure. in this position where they're thinking, oh, now I'm not going to pay and I'm not going to pay agents. So I'm not going to pay agents to do it on my own. Well, that's going to be harmful to, to them. Um, and some people may disagree with me. I can go buy my house on my own. Great. Go do it. Why aren't you yeah. doing it now? Right? You've always been able to do it. Exactly. Yeah, go, 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 go do it. You know, but not everybody is like you. Not everybody can do that. And by the way, you might do two or three deals and be fine, but that fourth one is going to be going to going to be bad, and you're going to wish you had some representation. But also, the damage is doing to agents. You know, it's literally a non-factor. It's literally that that things are always changing. We're always having yep. to switch it up. I mean, you know, if it isn't, you know, commission structure and buyer agency agreements, it's interest rates and prices and inventory. You know, every year is a different ball game. It's a whole different world when it comes to the real estate market. And we have to adjust every year to what's happening. You know, then we have a COVID year, then we have a election year, then we it it's always something. Yeah, it's always you know, a pivot. This, this is no different. You know? I mean, the name of the game of business is uh, you know, making adjustments and uh going with the flow and uh, you know, looking for the opportunity. So this is nothing but a huge opportunity. Um, especially, you know, the bigger, the, the bigger, the outroar, you know, the more, the, the more crying you hear, then the bigger, the bigger, the opportunity, uh, you know, and the more agents are backing off, you know, that gives you a really opportunity to, to, to lean in. Thousand percent. Well, and that's what I've been chatting about with our team as well is right. Opportunity and adversity. And we're going to talk about it a little bit, um, later here as well, but really, I mean, it, it gives an enormous amount of opportunity to create market share. But as you were talking about, I mean, it, that opportunity really shouldn't be there because again, most of this is it's, it's noise and it's, you know, it's the headlines. And that's why I tell, you know, tell my team, you know, you've got to, you've got to work with your people. You have to ask questions and understand where people are coming from, what they're watching, you know, and when someone has that objection, right, it's not just taking it at face value, you know, going that second, third, fourth, fifth level and understanding 
why is that objection coming up? Why is that important to you? And what is, how is it going to keep you from accomplishing, you know, what you're looking to accomplish? The objection of commissions and like the general public, like learning about this and bringing it up in listing presentations, you mean? Well, that and just really at the end of the day, anything that comes from the general public being out there and eating. It doesn't matter what the general public says. Much. It doesn't matter what exactly. they think. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they what they do. Right? That's the thing. Exactly. And as far as market share, you know, yeah, I said agents are backing off, so it gives you an opportunity to lean in. And there's a little truth to that. But the real truth is that it's 100%, 110% unlimited. The opportunity to expand your market share is unlimited. Nobody's in your way. Nobody can stop you. There's nothing between you and, and, and building more market share at any time in a great market, right. a down market, a, you know, a lawsuit, a Zillow, a brokerage, an agent. There's nothing because market share is just literally people that know who you are, what you do, and you're here to help. There's nothing stopping you from getting your message out there and telling your story and, you know, creating an environment where more people know who you are, what you do, and you're here to help. Nothing at any given time for any given reason. So market share is always on the table, 110% all the time at an unlimited rate. You can never get to the, to the whole pie. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's more than you can ever eat. It's like going to a buffet, right? And saying, I'm going to eat everything. Yep. It's never going to happen. You can't eat it all. Right. Um, and that that's the same thing as the market. There's there's more than enough for everyone to have more than enough and still be more than enough left over. Yeah. That's what's so amazing about this. So um, as far as objections with, you know, buyers, sellers, general public, it just doesn't matter. Right. I'm here to expand influence, connect buyers and sellers, figure out exactly what it is they want to do and why. Right. What what is their pain point? What problem were you trying to solve in their life um, that's causing them to buy or sell this piece of property? There's a there's a life problem happening that I've got to identify and help them solve. And the selling the property just happens to be the byproduct, the thing that actually solves the problem. But unless I understand what the problem is, I'm not getting to the root of the issue. And so now I'm just playing on the surface. Most agents play on the surface. They're just like, oh, you want to sell something? Okay, here's what it's worth. Here's the comps. Here's... Instead of saying, well, why, why would you sell that house? It's amazing. What's going on in your life that's causing you to, to, to sell this property? Until you learn that and go deeper and deeper and deeper, most agents can only ask like two questions deep. Even when they're talking to their spouse, even when they're talking right. to their mom, it's like a two question deep conversation. And then you kind of run out of questions and you kind of just go this way or that way or watch TV or whatever. Right. Everybody needs to practice going like five or 10 questions deep with everyone they know just to practice how you should be talking to everyone, you know, including your prospects. Right. And really sure. getting to the root of what's happening. I don't care if they think that they're not going to pay the buyer agent or if they're going to pay me less or whatever the case may be. What do you want to net? You know, what are you trying to net? OK, here's what I charge. Here's what I charge. Now, let me justify what the price needs to be to see if we can get you where you need to be, right? Well, this agent over here is going to do this amount. Okay, what amount is that? Let me think about if I want to match that or or go one basis point lower or, you know, or stand firm on where I am and say, you want to go with the cheaper agent? Go with the cheaper agent, right? These are all decisions sure. that we get to make, right? It's amazing because these are opportunities and decisions and options that we have as business people, to yep. make these decisions and to have these options uh, to decide what we want to charge, how we want to do it. It's amazing because we have that opportunity to make those decisions and we can decide to work with somebody, to not work with somebody, et cetera. Uh, and I think that's really incredible. Agreed. So just to take a super quick step back before we go forward. So for some, let's say they're living under the rock and, and, don't know what this settlement is. What what exactly was accomplished with this? Nothing. Not a not a thing. That's the crazy part about it. Is is NAR is going to pay four hundred eighteen million dollars if the thing even gets approved? You know, it's just a proposed settlement. That's right. the part that's really. Uh, I was in um, I was in Vancouver, Washington, uh, this past week. You know, mm -hmm. we we're with Ryan Serhant and and Ryan Pineda, and we're all hanging out backstage for hours talking about all kinds of stuff. And then we go out and there's a Q and A for us. And there's this agent there talking about, they're going to, they're going to change the rules on Feb on July 15th. 
And uh, how are we going to do? I'm like, they're not, nobody has said that anyone is going to change the rules on July 15th. Right. Yeah. That's what is proposed. Nothing has been approved. You're, you're asking the question like it's a done deal. It's not a done deal. We don't know right. what's going to happen. It's really a big unknown. We know what direction everybody's trying to take it. We know direct what direction the DOJ, you know, seems to be wanting to take it. But just like the fact that the Fed said we're gonna we're gonna reduce interest rates six times this year, and now they're kind of backtracking on that, right? It happens all 100%. the time. You don't know what they're gonna do. You have no idea. And and again, let me let me echo, let me repeat. It does not matter what happens, right? Basically, the the plaintiffs say that. You know, we shouldn't have figured in the buyer agent commission to to the overall commission and that, you know, on paper, they're actually paying the buyer agent. In essence, they they hired the listing agent for, say, five percent and they get to keep the all five percent if, if the buyer comes along. Um, but if the listing agent wants to split it with the buyer agent, they they can, you know, they can. It was the right. listing agent's money. On paper, on the HUD statement, on the on the settlement statement, it shows that the seller's paying it, right? But in essence, it's what they agreed to pay the listing agent, and the listing agent uh, agreed to to split that with the buyer agent um, if if in fact the buyer has their own agent, right? Just to help, right. you know, bring more buyers to the table, create more demand for the property. Um, and in essence, the sellers came out and said, well, on paper. It shows us paying the buyer agent, and we shouldn't have to pay for uh, the agent who is basically negotiating against us. So that's the basis of the whole lawsuit, and they win the lawsuit. And mm -hmm. so now, um, you know, you go back four years worth of buyers and sellers across the nation, and that's kind of what we're dealing with is everybody saying, well, you know, we, you know, and so we did the math, and like these owners are going to get like $5. Yeah. Well, after it's all said and done, you know, the lawyers are going to take X amount, um, you know, which is hundreds of millions. And oh, yeah. then they're the big winners. Yeah. And then and then the actual plaintiffs, which, you know, there's there's millions of them. Right. There's five hundred thousand just in Missouri in that case. And now it's nationwide. So there's millions of owners that are in this thing now nationwide. And they're literally going to get literally five dollars a piece. You know, we had it figured at ten dollars, but that was like not even counting like some of the fees and stuff. Like they're gonna get like five bucks, you know, for this. It's like, what did it accomplish? You ask me? Absolutely nothing, because all it accomplished was for the lawyers to make hundreds of millions and for us to switch yeah. up how we operate when it comes to buyer agency and commissions and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, nothing's gonna change. Um, yep. You know, if the buyers feel like for a while they can go do it on their own or if the sellers don't want to pay the buyer agent, that's all fine and dandy. But the fact of the matter is, is it it, it will swing right back the other direction. I was talking to Sirhan and he said that they've been like this since December ish or so where mm -hmm. sellers are saying, I want to have to pay buyer agent. So we're not going to. And he said now, you know, now that we're six months later, he was like now. Since so many sellers are not offering buyer agent commissions, I've got the sellers who really want to stand out, right? And they're saying, oh, everybody's not offering buyer agent commission. Let's offer buyer agent commission. They're offering a big buyer. Percent. They're giving they're offering a big buyer agent commission. Those are the properties that are selling the fastest and for the most money. Um, and he said it used to be a downtrend of people that were offering buyer commissions. He said, now it's an uptrend, right? Yep. And so they're already experiencing it because they they don't even have MLS up there. He said, like they don't even really have That's like wild. one central location. There's like a bunch of different websites and stuff like that. And there's this one website called Street Easy that they kind of refer to. It's owned by Zillow, but mm -hmm. they they're already kind of like going through this cycle where okay, if you take buyer agent commission away, it's only a matter of time before it comes swinging right back for many reasons. Number one, the sellers want to sell for the highest amount of money, so they want to attract the most amount of buyers. For qualified sure. buyers. Um, so that's one thing. Another reason is going to be for all the lawsuits and all the, you know, buyers who, you know, um, end up in, in a, in a situation, it's all going to come down to what the seller nets. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and what the seller, you know, what, what we can get and put in the seller's pockets, right. Anything above and beyond that, you know, let's say commissions go down to 3% because sellers don't want to pay buyer agents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, 
that doesn't mean we can't say, okay, well, I'm going to take one and a half of that and we'll offer it as seller concessions to the, to the buyer agent, right? I mean, it's going to get there one way or another, you know? So I agree remember, you, this, though, remember this, remember this, like I said in the beginning, you're never going to get paid less than the value you provide. Right. It's not going to happen. Yep. If you're underpaid, it won't be long before you're, it's back to where it needs to be because the value that you provide. Now, if technology makes it to where we don't provide as much value, it's like bookstores. Bookstores provide yep. a lot of value. But then Zilla, uh, Amazon came along and it made it to where bookstores didn't provide the same amount of value as they did before Amazon because you just buy it on Amazon. Yep. Um, but real estate is is different than buying a, buying a book. For sure. Uh, same reason why lawyers, you know, you need a lawyer to go in the courtroom with you. Right. Yep. You know, I had a for sale by owner. I sold him the condo. Mm -hmm. He wanted to buy another one. He's buying it for sale. He's buying it by owner. Right. And I didn't know he did all this. He called me. He's like, should I buy this condo? It's bigger than mine. I like it. I was like, yeah, you should. He buys it by owner. He's, he's selling by owner. He calls. Me, he's like, hey, we're buying that one by owner. We're selling ours by owner. I was like, all right, great. I'm like, awesome. Cool. Yep. yep. Then he's like, I got a contract and I need, I got a question on it. And now I'm thinking, well, I said, wait a minute, Mike. I was like, this is what you need an agent for. I said, now yep. you're asking me for advice. You want me to consult you on this legal matter, which is a contract. And now yep. if something goes wrong, what are you going to do? Come back on me? Now now you're putting me in a liability situation by giving you yep. advice on a contract I'm not representing you on. Yep. I said, I said it's easy. To law without on, a license. It's easy to put it on the market. It's easy to get the buyer, show the properties. That's the easy part, guys. The tough part is navigating the deal, negotiating the deal, making sure there's everything is right. You know, it's like it's a profession, man. It's like roofing a house. You don't know how to get up there and lay the shingles just right so water doesn't get in. You don't know. You know it's like a doctor. You don't know how to, you know, do surgery. I mean, people think that that might be an exaggeration. It's not. Yep. Right? It is literally that complicated. You do not know what you are doing um, and you need a professional. And you may, you may want to, you know, you may think that's, that's blowing smoke. Fine. Go do a couple deals on your own. If you feel that way, go do a couple deals on your own and see what it's like. Yep. Well, and I definitely think just as you were mentioning, and that's something I was talking to my agents as, um, as well about is that pendulum swinging back. And that's interesting to see that they're already seeing that up in, up in New York. Right. And so before it was a race down to the bottom, right? You started, you were starting to see some lower commissions. Now we could almost maybe see in some, in some markets, some properties, we might actually see in a race to the top, right? To see who can offer the most to try to get the most for that property. I mean, it could be a very interesting how far that pendulum swings back in the other direction. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it, and it, you know, who knows how long it'll take to swing, but the fact is, is it's just like home prices, right? Are home prices ever going to go to zero? Nope. Right. Is inventory ever going to go to zero? Uh, is transactions ever going to go to zero? It's never happened before, right? right? It's never happened in the history of time. Um, same thing with this commissions aren't going to zero. Um, never going to happen. Um, and, uh, you know, might they fluctuate? Now, I, I've always said for a long time, many, many years, I've said, mm -hmm. I think something will happen at some point where commissions are 4%, 2 and 2. Mm -hmm. I've said that for over a decade. I've said, I think at some point in the future, something will happen technology-wise, something will happen here, something will happen there. Something will happen that makes commissions 4%. It'll be a 2 and 2. I still yeah. think I still think that we're going to settle out, and maybe it's another 10 years, but I think we're going to settle out around a 4%, a two mm -hmm. and a two, right? Whether that right. 2% is paid through seller concessions because you can't legally offer it or something as a buyer agent commission or whether, however you classify it, I still yeah. believe sellers are going to pay the buyer agent commission most of the time. And I think it's going to be a two and two. And I, and I don't think that day is coming anytime soon. I think we're going to stay at a three and a, and a, you know, a three and, you know, for one side, you know, and a five and a six, I think we're still, we're still going to be there. I don't think that day is coming anytime soon, but, but, you know, I always said when that day comes and agents are getting 2% instead of three, if they're new to the business and they get 2%, they're like, wow, this is a lot of money. If they didn't yep. know what three felt like, you know, that's like you live in a condo building and they're going to build another one next door and ruin your view. 
And you're like, oh, I'm selling this place. It ruined your view and you're selling this place. Well, the next buyer came in. They didn't know what that view looked like. You know, yeah, they didn't have that frame of reference. Yeah, they, they love the way it is now and they buy it and you make a lot of money. Uh, it's the same thing with this, you know, so 2% still incredibly lucrative. Um, is it the same margins as three? Absolutely not. You know, absolutely not. Um, but this is where I think we're going to have to get into a world where we're highly efficient when it comes to expenses. Yep. You know, the days of paying 35% to Zillow or, or paying a lot of money for Zillow leads or, you know, giving team members 50% and doing all this stuff, right? That's why I like my model, you know, single agent, you don't buy leads, you know, you're lean and mean, you know, you get red X, you get the weekly email and you just create your own leads out of thin air. You create sweat equity in your business. You don't have any expenses, no yeah. marketing, no nothing. Right. And you crush it. You know, yeah. I, I think, I think that that model uh, is going to, is going to continue to crush. Well, and you touched on something there that definitely, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the, like you said, the realtor.coms and the Zillows, how they're able to, you know, pay that out, what that's going to look like, what type of referral fee they're able to ask for, you know, in the lead purchase model, like how much are they actually going to be able to charge for? And what they're does that gonna, look like with their same to, delivery? They're just going to charge agents to put their listings on Zillow. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just going to charge uh, like homes, homes.com, you know, it's a pay to play. You yeah. know, you, you don't, you don't pay for the leads. You pay for getting your listing on MLA on, on homes.com, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's, you know, it like, if we're becoming, if we, if we enter into the market where the, the buyer leads just aren't worth much because of whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then Zillow will just switch to that model, you know, and they'll just have agents paying a monthly fee or whatever for putting mm -hmm. listings on, on Zillow. And honestly, I don't know why they aren't doing that model anyway, right? And I think the reason they're not doing it is because they have every listing on there now, and they're more right. of a consumer. They're more of a consumer facing um, business than an agent facing business. Mm. Uh, that's why they haven't done it because they like the fact that everybody can see every listing that's on MLS on Zillow. So of course, and plus they're making thirty five percent of referrals and stuff like that. So yeah, let, let, let's run with that until we can't, and then once we can't, here's our backup plan: we right. just charge agents a monthly fee to uh, to put to put their listings on here. And no, not every listing is going to be on Zillow at that point because every agent's not going to pay, um, but a lot of them will because we've got the eyeballs. And you know, I think that business model would actually crush for them. For, for sure. So. All right. So going back to, obviously there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of social media stuff. There's just a lot of hustle and bustle over like we've been talking about at the end of the day, if you know your game, you know, your unique value proposition, right? You're just going to continue to do business and you're going to maybe even do business better and more efficiently. And maybe even you make will. a little bit more. You will. I think you will. Um, so how to, let's say the agents that maybe aren't as confident about how to navigate this, like what types of things should they be tuning in? How should they be looking at this and what types of skills would you say they need to be focusing on to make sure that that unique value proposition is extremely strong and they can sell that value? Well, you know, people think value is like how many views you can get for their listing video or, you know, what marketing strategy they're going to use to sell the listing or, um, you know, whatever. Right. Um, that's all the agents stuff. Let's call it mm -hmm. right. Your clients don't yep. care nothing about your stuff. They only care about their stuff. Yeah. What's their what's stuff in it for me? Well, it's what, yeah, but yeah, but their, their stuff is what I alluded to in the beginning, which is, They've got a problem, right, that they need solved. And selling the property or buying the property is kind of a byproduct of solving the problem. For example, mm -hmm. like my mother-in-law just moved in. Yep. Right? She's sick. You know, she she just moved in right with us. We're taking care of her now. All right. We need a bigger house. This house just isn't going to cut it. So it's not the house that's the problem, right? right it's right. the fact that they need more space because their mother-in-law moved in and they're dealing with this life situation. That's a problem yeah, yeah. that has nothing to do with buying or selling a house, but it causes them to buy or sell a house. See what I'm saying? Sure. 
So yeah. I got to get to the root of that. That's how you bring value is helping them realize that you're helping them accomplish that goal of solving the problem of needing more space because their mother-in-law is there. Not the buying the house part. The buying the house part is just a byproduct. It's just something else. It's just it's just a way to solve the problem, but it's not the problem, you know. Yeah. Um, so so bringing value is going deeper with conversations. Like I said, going five, ten questions deep with why they're trying to do this and understanding the real depths of it. It's like understanding timelines. Had an agent that was like, I can't get this person to do an appointment with me. They want to sell. They said they want to sell, but um, can't get them to set an appointment. I'm like, well, why do they want to sell? Well, their kids are going to college. And so they want to downsize, get a smaller house. I'm like, okay, great. He's like, they want to do it midsummer. I'm like, awesome. Where are the kids going to college? He's like Notre Dame and somewhere else. I'm like, okay, great. I'm glad you asked that question. That was a test. Then I'm like, okay, do they want to move out? Do the, you know, the kids are still going to be there in the summer, right? Right. So do they want to, they want to move out while the kids are still living with them and move into the smaller house before they go to college? Cause that's what the summer is. Or do they want to wait till the kids are gone in the fall? That's two different scenarios, two different timelines. Well, I don't know. Okay, well, see, here's where you stopped asking the questions and where you needed to continue to ask the questions to really understand the full picture of what they're trying to do, when they're trying to do it, how they're trying to do it. Right. Yep. And then what if their if their answer is, yeah, we're going to wait till the kids move out. So we're not really going to be interested in really moving until the fall. Okay. Do you want to move the moment that the fall hits? Like, do you want to find the property in the summer and have it all set up where it closes right when the kids are leaving? Or are you not really in a hurry? You know, just get them off the school, get that part of your chapter of your life done, and then kind of just like take some time to find what you want and stuff and maybe move, you know, winter time or something. These are all right. questions you have to ask your clients. And so when you're yep. asking these questions, this is value. This is how you prove and show and give people value is valuing who they are, what they do, what they're trying, what who they are, what they want to do and how they want to do it. Um, and most agents just won't go that deep. They're just like, oh, you want to sell a house? You want to sell it in the summer? Let's set the appointment. That's all he was focused on. Right. The appointment, the appointment. No, the appointment isn't even the next step. We don't even know when they want to do it, why they want to do it, when, you know, how they want to do it. You know, right. like you, you aren't even there yet to even try to set the appointment. No wonder they don't want to meet with you. Right. No kidding. Right. We're so, not acting genuinely interested. Right. That's where it starts is being real people. Right. Right. That That's it. And we've just kind of lost that art. And that's what I'm kind of trying to trying to bring back. But if you're an agent worried about this, I would just fear to say and just tell you, do not worry about this. If you're worried about this, again, what you're basically saying to yourself in the world is, is I get paid more than I'm worth and I'm worried you're fixing to figure it out and pay me what I'm actually worth, which is nothing. Right. Yep, and yep. if you're an agent that doesn't think you're worth anything, you're not going to be an agent very long. Yeah, for sure. So, and that's the same way in any industry. Right. And I think Brandon Turner said it best. Right. People are concerned when the tide goes out, we're going to see who's been swimming naked. Right. Yeah. And it's all perspective. You know, naked is basically perspective. You have the wrong perspective. Yeah. And so, um, you know, when something changes and you can't adapt because you are you have the wrong perspective, then um, then you get caught, you know, like yeah. realize the abundance of the business and realize the longevity of the business and realize the unlimitedness of the business. Right. And that you it's a buffet. You can't eat it all. Well, like I said earlier. So why not get in there and just eat as much as you can? Yep. I love it, man. So. Um, real quick, so we can uh, get this wrapping up, because I told you we were going to be firing uh, through this on Instagram. I think I saw you were discussing a little bit an article about um, commission potentially being rolled into into some of the loans. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's going to be something that comes down the pipeline sooner than later? Um, yeah, yeah, I think they will. Uh, they're just not they're not counted towards the uh, the cap that they put on the uh, concessions that the sellers can make. And, um, and yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll continue to see things in the financing world and the mortgage world that kind of, you know, cause, cause again, the mortgage people, they don't want to get caught in one of these lawsuits either, you know? So that's probably for the reason sure. they're kind of scrambling around and trying to make sure they're abiding by all things that's best for the consumer and, you know, so on and so forth and giving everybody uh, equal opportunity and a uh, fair housing and everything else. So, yeah. I think we'll continue to see new products and new ideas in the mortgage world in terms of loans and how everything's handled on that end. Um, but it just kind of goes to show you the whole industry is going to make adjustments, um, right. you know, and 
and everything's going to be just fine. You know, everybody's, you know, worried about this thing. And, you know, the only reason you need to be worried is if you don't have a business, if you don't have a business because you're worried about the business, so you, like build your business. You know, if you build your <laughs> yeah, business, okay. you ain't got nothing to worry about. You got a business. Exactly. Exactly. Nobody wants to be the blockbuster, but guess what? You're not going to be the blockbuster if you're focusing on the right things. Like you said, asking the right crash questions, building the value and really just going out there and, and doing what needs to get done. Well, what did, what what been doing what did the I mean, where did the guys at Blockbuster go? Like, I don't know the story. I don't know where they actually went. Right. But they're somewhere doing something. I guarantee it's pretty successful. See, yeah, that's the absolutely. part, that's the part I need to look up. Right. Like where are the guys that did Blockbuster? <laughs> where are they now? I yeah, guarantee okay. you they're running another really highly successful business. I guarantee you because they built Blockbuster and yeah, they yeah. learned the lessons from Blockbuster getting crushed, yeah, right? Yeah. And I guarantee you they've built something 10 times better, right? I'm going to look that up and kind of see, but because I guarantee you that's the story. Because that's the story that always plays out when you see these huge failures is these yep. people built these big businesses. They learn from whatever that was and then come back 10 times stronger. It's like me. It's like anybody else. Yep, so yep. you think about that, you know, like you don't want to be the blockbuster. Well, if you look up what's going on with the blockbuster guys right now, you know, and I don't know, I haven't looked it up. I have no idea. Um, I'll have but to dive into that. That's, that's an interesting are, perspective for sure. Chances are when you read that story, chances are you're going to want to be the blockbuster. For sure, man. Yeah. The typically, as we talked about, right. Adversity creates opportunity. Um, so I'm, I'm right there with you, man. This could really be the tipping point in many agents, businesses to go from good to great, you know, as long as they know how to have the conversation, as long as they know how to ask the questions, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth levels, be actually interested, right. And be able to share that unique value proposition. They're going to be able to build an enormous, um, massive pipeline of relationships for listing and or buyers. Yeah, bro. So where are you speaking next? I'm going to Manhattan. I'll Manhattan. be at the Real Deal. Yeah, the Real Deal Forum. They're doing a forum up there. Then I'm doing a little tour through uh, Florida. I got Miami and Jacksonville, but I'm kind of going through Tampa and Orlando. Got some meetings. So yeah, man. Awesome. Where are you going to be in Miami? Lux Summit. Okay. There's a summit called the Lux. Lux L U X. Yep. Yeah, Lux. Lux Summit. So they called me, wanted me to come down for that. So cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do That's that cool. one. So are there and any projects? Set more, the, I've got the, the listing challenge, setmorelistingappointments.com. Yep, I've got yep. that uh, happening in two weeks. It's a week-long training thing. And I'll do that every 60 days. So every 60 days. Okay. So where can they sign up for that if they want to get involved? Setmorelistingappointments.com. There we go. Couldn't yeah. be any easier than that. No, pretty good domain. I love it, man. All right. So I'm going to uh, truly appreciate you jumping on, brother, you know, for lightning around to really kind of cut through the BS and give people the actions behind the strategies, right? Because as we talk about, measurable actions lead to measurable results. And, you know, a lot of it is just it's out there and it's just to distract you from what you should really be doing, which is focusing on continuing to increase the tools that you have, the value that you can bring and the things that you can provide so you can have unparalleled customer service so you're a true gentleman and a scholar i really appreciate you jumping on here ricky i'm going to jump to the outro my brother but you don't have to stay on here for that if you don't want to cool cool hey good to see you appreciate you man and uh, we'll talk to you soon always brother we'll try to catch up with you when you remind me see you guys